So for this video we're going to use Bernoulli's equation to solve a problem that's been set up here. This problem is slightly more complicated than the previous two videos and it actually combines the principles that we've looked at in the previous two videos. So what we've got here is a tank of water. A pipe comes out of that tank of water. That pipe is 0.015 meters in diameter. It goes up and then expands to a new diameter of 0.08 meters. It then goes back down to a point below the water surface in this tank. The height between point X where we want to find the pressure and the water surface is 0.3 meters. The height from the water surface to the bottom of the system is 0.5 meters. And like I said, we want to find what the pressure X in this pipe is. So what we're going to do is set up Bernoulli's equation. And I'm going to set up Bernoulli's equation between point number one at the water surface of this tank and point X in the pipe where we want to find out the pressure. So what we can say is that Z1 plus P1 over rho G plus U1 squared over 2G equals Zx plus Px over rho g plus ux squared over 2g. So in just the same way as all of the other examples that we've looked at so far, what we're saying is that the elevation at 1, the pressure at 1, and the velocity at 1 in terms of pressure heads are the same as the elevation at x plus the pressure at x plus the velocity at x. So we can go through our standard process of reducing down the terms in this equation. So z1, we know what z1 is because we've been given the elevation, so we've got z1. The pressure at point 1 is going to be 0 because at point 1 we're at atmospheric pressure. And we can assume in the tank that the velocity at point 1 is also going to be 0. So the only energy you have at point 1 is the elevation. At point x, we actually have both elevation, pressure and velocity at point x. Because we're in a pressurised pipe, it's at some elevation above the datum. And there's going to be a velocity because water's flowing through it. So actually we have three, and no, uh, three terms here that aren't 0. But we do know what Zx is because we're given all of the elevations, so we've already got Zx. So that just leaves us with two unknowns. The two unknowns we've got are pressure at x and velocity at x. Now just using the equation as it's formulated here, we can't actually solve it because we can't work out what x is at this point just by using the equation as we've set it up here. But what we can do is use the principle that we used right back in the first video looking at Bernoulli's equation where we can try to find out what the velocity coming out the pipe at point 2 here is. If we get that velocity then we can work out the flow because we've got the diameter and therefore area of the pipe at point 2. Once we've got the flow we can then work out the velocity at x because we've got the diameter of the pipe at x. So what we want to do is work out the velocity of the system coming out of this pipe down here. So this is exactly the same as what we did a few videos ago. So Z1 plus P1 over rho G plus U1 squared over 2G equals Z2 plus P2 over rho G plus U2 squared over 2G. So actually, in a system like this, the only thing we're interested in is the net difference in elevation between two points, so point one and point two. We don't really worry about what's going on above it because between these two points, the only thing that's going to affect the velocity is the net difference in elevation between these two points. So what we can do is what we've done in previous examples, which is say that at point one, there's no pressure, there's no velocity, at point 2 there's also no pressure because we're at atmospheric pressure and there's no elevation because we're right at the bottom of the system. So we know that Z1 
equals u2 squared over 2g. So to work out the velocity at point 2, the velocity at point 2 is going to be the square root of z1 2g, which is equal to 0.5, because that's our elevation from the water surface to point 2. So 0.5 times 2 times 9.81 which gives us a velocity at that point of 3.132 meters per second. We can then work out the flow in the whole system. So we know that the flow is going to be UA. So at this point in the system, we've got U, we've just calculated that it's 3.132 meters per second. And the area at this point we're not given the area, but we're given the diameter, so the area is going to be pi r squared. So the diameter, which is 0.015 divided by 2 squared, gives us a flow of 5.535 times 10 to the minus 4 meters cubed per second. So the key to this problem is remembering that within a system, within a steady system, with an incompressible fluid, the flow is going to be the same at every point in that system. So the flow at x is the same as the flow at 2. So what we can do is we can now work out ux as the discharge of the system divided by area x. So that will be the flow that we've just worked out, 5.535 times 10 to the minus 4 meters cubed per second, divided by the area of x, we're given the diameter, so the area is going to be pi r squared, so the diameter over 2 squared, which gives us a velocity at x of 0 0.11 meters per second. So what we've done in the first half of this problem is We've applied Bernoulli's equation and the principle of continuity to work out what the velocity at x is. So what that now means is going back to Bernoulli's equation that we set up for this problem to start with, we've now got that velocity term. So the only unknown in this equation now is the pressure term. So we can rearrange the equation for pressure. So pressure term Px over rho g is going to be equal to elevation at 1 minus velocity at x minus zx. So our first elevation is 0 0.5 metres. We've worked out our velocity at x as 0 0.11 metres per second, so we can work out our velocity head at x and zx is elevation at 2 which is the elevation elevation at x which is the elevation from x to the bottom of the system so 0 0.5 add 0 0.3 so this elevation x is going to be 0 0.8 and that gives us a final pressure head at x of minus 0 0.3 meters and what we can do as the final part of this question is convert that into a pressure in newtons per meter squared. So if our height is pressure at x over rho g, then pressure at x is going to be height times rho g. So pressure at x is going to be minus 0.3 meters times density of water, which is 1000 times gravity, which gives us our final pressure of minus 2000 949.5 newtons per meter squared. So the pressure at x inside that pipe is minus 2949.5 newtons per meter squared. And that's how we would apply Bernoulli's equation to work out the pressure inside a system like this.